Hey guys, welcome back to Grace Junction Homestead. I promised you a garden tour, so we're doing one. Um, I'm not happy about it, I'll warn you that. I actually shot a garden tour twice for you. And I went to edit, and I couldn't. <laughs> uh, Cause I found that I was just, I was just walking you around showing you all the devastation. I didn't want to do that. And I think that I just needed a few days to come to terms with the fact that this is happening. <laughs> this is my reality. And it's not, it's not that I want to sugarcoat things or show you all the shiny happy things. Um, which I, of course I do. Um, it's that I want to live that. <laughs> and I have to take a moment, take a breath, and come to terms with the fact that that is not my reality right now. Um, and really needing to do that was the reason why I couldn't make a video. <laughs> not because I didn't want to show you, it was because I needed to deal with it. Um, so we're gonna have an unhappy garden tour today. Prepare yourself for that. Um, I'm gonna show you the surface things that are going on and talk a little bit about the underlying issues that I'm facing toward the end, which is overwhelming for me and really big, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> uh, stay tuned to find out why I may not have a garden ever again here. Um, because if I don't figure things out right now, I won't. Right, so surface surface issues. Um, the biggest thing that I'm dealing with on the surface right now is powdery mildew and the sun shining on these, so it's kind of hard to show. Let's see if I can find one in the shade or make shade. <laughs> uh, let me find a good example here. Yep, powdery mildew. Um, and that's... <laughs> Oh, it's it's taken it's taking out my my cucumbers, my squash up there. You can see the light hitting it. They're white because they're covered in mildew. Um, and as you can see, I have just heavily pruned these things in the process of trying to save them. Um, I've tried peroxide water um, and and a couple other things that were ridiculous. And I'm not even going to say what they are. <laughs> things that were not from the store um, because. I don't want to put like chemical fungicides or even any of that store-bought organic stuff. I really, that's a last resort. Um, and I've dealt with powdery mildew a little bit before and um, you know I just, I, I pruned them like crazy and fertilized and got new growth and everything was awesome. They came back to life and they were all healthy and, and the struggle was over. That has not been the case this year, and if you watch to the end, you'll find out why. <laughs> um, so that's what's going on with those. They're just twiggy and sad and sick, and there's just not really much I can do. Um, my next issue has largely been fungus with the tomatoes too. And I've tried basically the same things to try to deal with those. Um, you know, adding fertilizer to the garden to try to get new growth and then pruning off the bad and then hitting them with um, various strengths of peroxide water. It should work, but it's really not. Um, <laughs> it, it's worked a lot better than, than with a powdery mildew, but it's still an issue. Um, another thing I'm struggling with is some end rot. <laughs> which should be a really simple solution. You just throw on some calcium and, and they come back to life, you know, and everything is good after that. Um, that's not been the case. Again, listen to the end and you'll find out why. <laughs> oh, don't they look sad? They're like trees with like really long trunks and just a little bit of foliage at the top. These are the things I, I just couldn't bear to show you. But I have to be honest because well, I promised myself when I began this YouTube journey that I would be, you know, for better or worse. Um, we got some Japanese bean beetles 
eating up our <laughs> eating up our beans, but um, these are actually doing all right. Um, despite these little guys here. Anyway, we put up a bunch of these little traps and they work really, really well. They have saved my beans. Um, so the beans are actually doing really good. The zinnias are doing really good. I wish I had planted more because they really bring color and joy to my garden. And I need that right now because I'm a little sad. <laughs> um, as you can see, these plants aren't really growing. They're just not doing a whole lot. The peppers are doing fine. Um, actually, the ones over here are doing really, really well. This end of the bed, not so much. I don't know why. I think we have a soil issue there. That, that's a lack of pollination. They don't get pollinated, they just shrivel up and die. These two, I gotta hand pollinate or they're gonna do the same thing. All squash in my garden is being hand pollinated right now or I would have none. I hand pollinated that guy, he seems to be doing good. It's the only way we're getting zucchini. It's just, <laughs> it's infuriating. Um, the only bees that I've seen, okay, I've seen a bumblebee three times <laughs> on different days. I don't know if I have three different bumblebees in the area or if it's the same one coming back. <laughs> but that's it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. Over here in this part of my garden where that fencing is sitting is a massive wasp nest in the ground. Um, and we're actually leaving it alone because those are the only pollinators we have and they're um, they're a non-aggressive kind. They're real small and non-aggressive but if you know much about bees you'll know that wasps <laughs> are more armored than they are fuzzy so they're not these are actually doing all right. We didn't get any strawberries at all but I figured that's because it was the first year. Um, anyway though uh, <laughs> yeah they're not good pollinators kind of just pan around and I will talk to you a little bit about our fall garden because I'm just starting to put that in although I'm not really sure why <laughs> uh, so I'm putting a bed over here remember we had like a whole bunch of totes lined up right here like well, cleared this off back here and then I'm starting to put that bed in and then I'm putting a little one in over there which is actually over part of the hive and that's going to be one that's going to match here and i don't know for sure what i'm going to put in there this year but eventually it's going to be a strawberry and rhubarb one like this um so yeah <laughs> working on that um i think this bed is new no this bed isn't new that's right it just wasn't hardly planted i had these tomatoes in and then i had a couple squashes there um, and then that was it and then I put in this one so in this bed I have put in um, I bought a couple from, from Walmart a couple cucumbers one on each side of these squash plants and then I put in let's see what I put in there I think I put in beans I forgot to label it again <laughs> I know what varieties they are once they come up though I'm pretty sure um, I think these are the ideal market beans I'm pretty pretty sure very sure almost entirely sure. Um, I put in some, uh, I think, cucumbers here. And we'll see if they sprout or not. I don't know if they will, I honestly don't. Uh, I hope they do. <laughs> um, and then I put in, I think some zucchini here. I'm trying to remember what I put in. No, it wasn't zucchini, it was something else. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> I know I put in red noodle beans here. And then right next to whatever this was, was some more green beans. And then some red noodle beans there. And then some melons there. And I haven't planted that yet. But I do, oh wait, oh I did. I put zinnias down the middle. And then I'm planning on putting some kind of root crop there. Probably beets because I'm struggling with beets and I'm just determined that I'm gonna get beets. Um, I have some potatoes growing in these three right here. And then I'm gonna do some carrots in there. And then after I get those totes over there painted. Can you even see them? I don't know if you can. I have another line of totes over there. Um, I want to put some carrots in those. So despite the fact that I have to hand pollinate my squash, <laughs> I'm still going to grow some more for, for uh, my fall garden. And then I'll be doing beans and then I'll be 
trying my darndest to do <laughs> beets and um, carrots. Um, I'll be doing some more cucumbers. Because my cucumbers are sick, so I need more. <laughs> we haven't had a single slicer. And actually, Mia's garden has like two that are looking pretty good. So <laughs> we might have two slicers this year um, before my plant dies. But anyway, so I, I have stockpiled a little bit of pickles, not enough to really can yet. Um, we are getting some, we're starting to get some, but I do want to grow a lot more so that I can have some throughout the winter. <laughs> we love our pickles and we don't like buying food from the store if we don't have to. It's gonna be your buying from the store though. Um, now let's talk about why we're really, really, really struggling. Okay, so here we are at the end. Time to talk about the big issue. Um, there's something wrong with my soil. Something really, really wrong. I'm new here and I don't know anything about it. I, I can tell you that I don't think that it's just clay um, and the composition of the soil itself like that. Um, in some areas we have, like we'll have a big pocket of just massive clay and it is so thick you could probably make a pot with it without any effort at all <laughs> or adding anything to it. Um, and then 10 feet later, it's sandy and everything in between and just all over the place. It's really uneven. So I, I did a mix here and there and, and kind of just mixed it in. Um, hoping that it would kind of fix itself from adding this kind of soil and that kind of soil. Um, I don't think that's a problem though. <laughs> uh, there's something missing from our soil. Um, I'm struggling with blossom and rot, which we've been watering evenly so that tells me that it's not watering it's probably calcium um I tried to amend it it didn't do anything um my I did a lot of heavy pruning um with my plants usually when I do that I just add some nitrogen and and they take off they just you know grow and grow and and bush out and there's new growth it didn't happen nothing happened. Um, it was like I didn't fertilize them at all. Um, so I pulled them up and started looking and you know I had, I had plants that were dying so I pulled them out and I wasn't even looking for a cause in the roots but I found one. <laughs> My plants don't have roots. They have almost nothing and I wish that I had saved you one. I don't want to go rip up something right now to show you because I want to I want to keep what I have. Oh. I want to keep it so much longer than it, it'll stay, but um, there's almost nothing. You pull it up and it's just just the end of a stalk with a couple short little hairs. Almost all the different kinds of plants that I have all look like that. So that tells me that it's probably a phosphorus issue. Um, ordinarily, if I have a, a deficiency in phosphorus, I would go and just get some organic, you know, bone meal or whatever, um, and put it on there. But if your plants don't have roots to take up the nutrients, there's no point. <laughs> um, so at this point I need to, because the situation is so bad, it is so, so bad, um, I'm going to have to take a soil sample in wherever I can. I don't even know where to begin to do that or how to do it. But I have to call around today and find out where I can take a soil sample into and find out what is wrong with my soil. If I can't amend it enough so that my plants can grow roots next year or start seeds next year, I'm not going to be able to have a garden. Or, you know, it's, it's going to be this bad or worse even because the plants that I do have now are sucking what very little nutrients out of the ground that they can and yeah I don't even want to talk about how much money that I've spent on seeds that are not producing plants this year it's it's torture um, so it'd be well worth it to have our soil tested because of the investment that goes into the garden every single year and just if nothing else for the factor that it is so so depressing to have had so much success 
in gardening before and to be failing so badly now and not understand why. I feel like I can only accept what's happening in my garden if I understand why and I can stop it or prevent it next year. Um, so there's your happy garden tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I honestly, I don't know whether to laugh or cry or both, but that is my reality right now. We have good years and we have bad years, and when you start from scratch, you have a lot of problems, <laughs> and I feel like a brand new gardener all over again after, you know, becoming a successful one, because I moved to a place that I don't know anything about, so it's like starting all over from no knowledge again. Anyway, so that's what's going on with that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do any more garden tours this year, uh, honestly. <laughs> um, I probably will. I think I probably will. And at the very least, I will keep you updated on what exactly is wrong with my soil. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, except have a blessed day.